different things this semester. Some were successful, some were not. I started with a project that I have traditionally done where kids have to graph some data. And my previous experience had been that I have kids that um, have a wide ability range and knowledge base when it comes to graphing, but everybody did the same lesson. So I had kids who were lost and kids who were bored. Um, and then everything in between. So this year I divided it up into three different assignments and kids could self-select the one that fit their interest level and also their ability level. So in Honors English 9 this past unit I tried something um, a little bit different. I put the students into groups according to their chosen favorite literary genre. And within those groups they had to read The House on Mango Street together. And they also are doing independent reading within their chosen literary genre. And they're doing a creative writing project where they have to write a group of short stories within their favorite literary genre. In order to personalize, I really focused on project-based learning and within each of the projects that the students can choose from, there is a lot of student choice um, based on the topics that they want to research, how they present. Um, the assessment is pretty flexible in terms of if they want to approach it with um, a presentation or a paper or a story or that sort of thing. And then in my two other classes, I've personalized by going very self-paced. So I started off personalizing um, by giving students choice on how they learn the material. So when they come into class, they get to decide how they want to learn. Do they read the textbook? Do they listen to lecture? Do they watch a video? Or do they use other internet sources? Um, this year in class, I have tried self-choice with kind of projects and assessments they want to, to work on some self-pacing where I've given a chapter or several chapters throughout a time period where they can choose the assignments they work on during it and when they finish. Um, I've tried a lot of different types of where you can work with a group where you can work by yourself for different assignments, um, some checklists where you have to accomplish certain scores and certain tests before you can move on, and just I don't, we, we've tried a lot of things. It's been kind of fun. I've seen a higher level of engagement and I've seen a lot of growth demonstrated by my students, um, especially in our co-taught class where students come into language arts feeling vulnerable and like they can't get it and they're now walking away from formative and summative assessments feeling a lot more confident and learning the strategies that will allow them to be successful. Watching kids kind of take ownership of their learning. It's been fun to see them maybe work together sometimes and ask kids that they wouldn't necessarily ask for help because they're out there at the same point and maybe their friend isn't with them. So that's been kind of cool. One of the biggest things is I feel really connected to the kids because we're working so much more personally with them instead of standing up in front of the room trying to lead a lesson to 30 kids where some are behind, some are uh, you know sitting bored and some are sort of right with you. Um, we meet at least a couple times a week one-on-one -on -one with every kid, either Julie or I. So I feel like I have such a great understanding of where every kid is at. So one of the best things that I have seen in the personalized classroom is that students know where they're going. They know their path and they take ownership of that and they appreciate being able to choose what they're going to work on. Um, a couple times I have had all students on the same pace or having this working on the same item and that's usually when I have behavioral issues so when I let students choose their own path um, I don't have any issues students are on task and and moving forward I love the conversations I'm hearing I love seeing them argue about answers and actually do the work and look it up or present the two um, differing opinions to me and um, I feel like kids are also interacting with each other a lot more. Uh, my classroom is a lot louder. That's something that I've had to get used to and be okay with. Um, I definitely feel the students have been engaged and that's a good thing, but I think the thing that I've noticed the most in my students this year is an increase in confidence. I think that allowing them to take a little bit more ownership has made them realize that they can take ownership and it's been good for me to see that if I do take a step back things can still go okay they don't need me to be always in charge and control
this is Thomas's class does a lot of different things. She does the self-paced, which I personally enjoy because a lot of times I just want to go ahead with the project and I don't want to wait for the rest of the class. When she gave us this choice, it was something I was interested in and other people were interested in, so it made me want to do the English homework or want me to do the work. I really like how we get to pick what, what topic we got. Like for our Out of the Box project, we got to pick what country in South America and got to pick an idea of how we want to wanted to learn it um if it's like hard you can ask a teacher and then they'll like it's a lot easier because when you were teach like as a group and like as a class it's harder to ask questions i like it because then i'm not like i feel like i'm less stressed with this way where we get to decide our own projects and get to create our own storyline and so Mrs. Carlson's allowing us to take it into our own hands, which is really nice. And it makes us all feel like we're, like personally, you have a lot more influence into the project. I like how she gives us choices about the digital lesson in the workbook because it gives kids different learning options of listening or reading and writing and stuff like that. It makes it more fun. Yeah, we don't, you know, not too many constraints in the usual, you know, ordinary project. Now it's more like we decide what to do, we call the shots pretty much. And now it's more independent because it's self-paced. So basically we get to work at our own pace instead of being pressured by um, everyone being at the same pace. Well, I think having a choice is a lot more fun. Like it makes me um, want to keep doing more stuff and work harder so that she lets us keep having choices because then when you don't have a choice it's kind of like oh I have to do this not I can do this because I chose this. I like self paced more than regular classes just because it's more freedom and every student's different obviously so it gives them the choice to learn how they want so I like it like that. If you have a question with something you can kind of just go up and you're not slowing anyone else down but then if someone else has a question they're not slowing you down. It really challenges me as a reader and as a student to look more deeply into a novel and pull out all those connections and themes and points that the author makes. I think some students think that they're just kind of like trapped in, in what all the deadlines by the uh, teacher, but I really think that uh, having a self-paced portion of the class uh, really puts the student in like the driver's seat. We have our choices on like if we want to do um, with the teacher, do our like notes with the teacher on our own, and if we like want to change the notes we take, and like just having that option lets us be able to learn it our own way, and like if some way is not good enough for us, or like we don't learn it that well, we can just do it our own way, the way that we think is best for us, and just having that option is an amazing thing. advice um, for somebody who is wanting to jump in and try personalization is um, be really okay to fail. I would suggest that they started with proficiency based learning. Um, I think it's the easiest one to start with because if a student doesn't understand the material they basically are stopped and then it gives um, the teacher and the student time to figure out what they aren't understanding and move on from there. Ask your kids too like would you want to have some choice in a project? Can I, could you help me make a rubric? I would say, first of all, look at what you're already doing because chances are there are some things you're doing that are personalized learning that you maybe just haven't identified as such. Um, start small, look for the assignment or that project where you could um, offer some different options or that one unit where you could let students self-pace. Be patient with the process, be patient with yourself. If you are like myself, the type of person that just jumps in the water completely, um, what I would do, you're gonna just take it on all at once, awesome, but give yourself a lot of grace. And if you can to find somebody to jump in with you. I was really amazed at some of the conversations I had with eighth graders and how much they actually care about what they're learning. It's not easy all the time by any means, but it was worth it and I'm glad I tried it and I'll keep trying it um, and hopefully it'll keep getting a little easier as I figure it out.